All Gravy with Teresa. Hey guys, this is Teresa and you are in Teresa's kitchen and you're watching It's All Gravy with Teresa. That's a lot of Teresa's, so maybe you'll remember it. Um, we always start by washing our hands. We've already cleaned our counters and especially now, you know, that's so important if you're having extra people over. Um, we've been very fortunate. We have a large family, uh, but we have the same circle all the time. Uh, and we are wearing masks when we go to town and trying to get through this thing. But today, we are going to make the first item on our Thanksgiving meal. We're going to start um, each week from now on. We're going to post something that we uh, have for our Thanksgiving dinner. And we always have mashed potatoes is always a staple. And we have a huge bowl of mashed potatoes for our Thanksgiving dinner or any meal really that we have. Uh, we just did one Saturday for my son's birthday and they cleaned the pan up. So we start off, this is just an average and I'd say this would feed about six people, um, six to eight. And we started off with eight russet potatoes and that's these brown potatoes and you'll see uh, Idaho potatoes, russet potatoes. Uh, these work the best. I think they uh, they cook up faster. Um, also there's red skin potatoes and a lot of times you can use those if you want to dress up your meal a little bit and they say they don't have as many calories but I can't swear to that. I've just heard it before. So I've already got part of my potatoes peeled. So I'm gonna finish peeling them and uh, I'm saving my scraps for our little chickens and they're still doing great. Uh, might come in this morning with three eggs and we should get two or three this afternoon. So, um, you know, we talk about uh, living intentional and trying not to waste and uh, these little buckets where I get ice cream uh, for the kids. These work out great for watering, saving stuff, feeding the chickens, and uh, you know, just a good plastic container. And I've tried, I don't know if you guys have or not, I have tried not to buy so much plastic and it is really hard. Um, you know, it seems like most everything that we use is in a plastic container. Um, so I'm really trying hard to repurpose that stuff because um, we got enough plastic floating around. And my handy dandy, uh, this is uh, Cuisinart. Uh, and I think maybe that has something to do with, um, like I've also got a chopper that's Cuisinart. So it's, it's a good brand. And I've had this one for a long time and it's still sharp. A funny story, my husband was helping me the other day when we were making dinner for CW and he was using it like a knife, like peeling them backwards. And I was like, what in the world are you doing? I mean, that's gotta be 20 times harder to just get you a paring knife and do it. We've got another beautiful day here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We had rain yesterday, but today the sun's shining. It's a beautiful, the temperature's down, beautiful fall day. Now I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, I'm gonna rinse my potatoes off, and you'll see these little eyes on here. You can take those out if you want to, but it doesn't hurt a thing. I'm going to leave mine just like that. And you rinse them off good. My wrists are kind of hurting this morning, so I'm going to have to do this a little bit backwards. But when you get old, there's always a way. You just have to figure out what works for you. 
So there's our rinse off potatoes. And um, for me, I cut them in kind of small pieces because they cook faster. Um, and it's just really easy if you have a good knife. Uh, this is a KitchenAid knife and uh, might keep them sharp. So that's a thing if you, you know, we talked before about young people, if you want to stock your kitchen, you know, ask for a good set of knives. And then if you have a sharpener, um, you know, if you keep them sharp all the time, they'll last you a lifetime. Um, but I just cut it in half and then thirds and then and you can do these as big as you like like I said I like the smaller pieces because they cook up faster and these will take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook we get them done and we're gonna put them in this pot we're gonna cover them with water and bring them to a boil and let them continue to boil uh, for about 15 minutes 15 to 20 you can check them you can tell when they're tender We um, had such a good time. We had two birthday parties this past weekend. Uh, my daughter Madeline turned 17, and so Mike made his famous Reno's Wings, and we had, what's the name of the place, the pizza? Donato's. Donato's, which was delicious, and that's some of my friends. Uh, Mr. Hill, hello. And uh, the pizza was great, and they even delivered, uh, which was wonderful for us. And we live out of town about 10 miles, um, and they delivered. It was great. Uh, so all the wings were eat. Everybody filled up good. And then the next day, we did it again for CW's birthday. Uh, but it was great seeing family and all the kids playing and everybody getting along and I think I miss my sisters uh, getting to come and I remember for years how many things I missed because of the restaurant just because if you have a day off you don't want to mess with people um, so uh, anytime they don't come I understand you know if they've got a minute they want to breathe and on these potatoes, you know, we talk about, um, I like for you to have time to sit down and eat at the dinner table. And these, again, the whole process takes maybe 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and you can even do this part, go ahead and boil them if you have time the night before or the day before. And you can put these in, after they cool off, cooked, put them in the refrigerator if you're going to use them in a day or two, or you can put them in the freezer. And they're already cooked. All you have to do is microwave them and then mash them, uh, which is, would save you a little bit more time. We, you guys be thinking about the list that you want us to do for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I mentioned this mashed potatoes is going to be the first one that we do. And our meal is usually pretty much the same. My kids and my grandkids, um, you know, they will tell me what they want. And our staples are uh, mashed potatoes. Uh, giblet gravy from our turkey, macaroni and cheese, we've already got that recipe on here, the Velveeta macaroni and cheese, um, what else, we do? oh, uh, green bean casserole, you know, that was uh, when those French onion crumbles come out, you know, my mama loved making that, so, you know, I still do that. Um, what else we do? A pea salad. Uh, so that's something you all might enjoy. It's a cold salad. 
but it holds up real well and it uh, goes good to have greens for your dinner. So y'all be thinking about what you want. This year we've got corn that I put up, so we're going to add fried corn uh, to our menu. And maybe some of y'all did that too. Maybe some of you put up your corn. Uh, Clint and I were talking the other day about our numbers, and we're trying to uh, shorten the videos where you have time to um, enjoy the cooking part, you know, and I'm trying to, whatever I want to say to you, do it the same time I'm cooking. Um, but you know me, I like to talk. Um, but I think it's working out good. The last video we put up had good numbers, and I think people enjoyed watching it. And again, I say all the time, you know, I appreciate you all so much. Uh, the ones who are watching, liking, sharing. Uh, the YouTube, we're still trying to get that up to a thousand. Uh, but if all this ever is, is what we're doing right now, I'm fine with that. Uh, I just love having you all in my kitchen. Um, I love feeling like I'm connecting with you. And when you comment, uh, it really warms my heart and my spirit. Um, you know, when you were, you grew up in the public, it's kind of hard to go from, you know, seeing 600 people a day that you know personally know their names to go to not seeing anybody. It's been a hard transition for me. So this has been wonderful. Okay, we got them all chopped up. And now we're gonna cover them with water. We've already rinsed them, so we don't have to do that. And I go ahead and put warm to hot water on them just so it helps it um, boil faster. So again, you're gonna cover them with water. And I will add just a little bit of salt That's good. We're gonna put them over here on our handy dandy new range. We're gonna start them off on high, like I said. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little salt in here. We're gonna let them come to a boil. And then we're gonna let them boil uh, for 15 to 20 minutes. You can check them at 15 minutes and see if they're tender. Uh, if not, let them cook just a little bit longer. Uh, another neat little trick is if you don't want them to boil over, take you a wooden spoon and lay on top and that's going to keep them from boiling over. All right, guys, I'm enjoying talking to you this morning and we are going to let these potatoes cook and we'll be back and Tell you what our secret recipe is for making them so good. See you soon. All right, guys, we are back in Teresa's kitchen, and we're going to finish up our mashed potatoes. And when you see the secret ingredient, you're going to be so happy because they are so good. These took about 15 minutes to cook. Uh, remember your wooden spoon, so you don't have to worry about them boiling over. That does work. And I'll show you maybe how, see how tender they are? So you can just smash them with the fork. That's what you want them to look like. Okay. So we are going to add three, you know I love butter, three tablespoons of butter. And remember, on your little stick of butter, it has marks on there. Um, so you can, you just count the marks, and that's how many tablespoons you're going to have. And then I put my salt and pepper together here. It says uh, we like pepper, so I've got a half of a tablespoon of pepper and one teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add that in. And this is another recipe 
that you adjust to your family. If you don't like pepper, leave the pepper out. If you don't like as much salt, don't put as much salt. Um, and this is our secret weapon right here, is the sour cream. And it can be any brand, but I'm gonna put two heaping tablespoons of sour cream, which that's probably about a third of a cup, maybe. It's so hard for me, because I don't measure anything, but I try to for you all to do this. Uh, I think most people have a mixer these days, but if you don't, uh, if your potatoes are good and tender, this masher works just as well. It just takes a little bit of work, but you'll see how easy they mash up and mix up. Um, if you do them with a potato masher, you're going to have more chunks. Uh, my bunch like them creamy. So I'm going to use the mixer to finish these up. Yeah. Clint thought it <laughs> So I'm going to cook and mix all this. And see how beautiful they look already. And then we're going to add, we're going to start with a fourth, I'm just going to put that much, of milk. And it can be any, it can be whole milk. 2% um, is what we use all the time. And I'm going to go ahead and put a good, if you leave them like they're perfect now, these are perfect. But if it's going to be a little bit before you serve them, it's just like macaroni and cheese. You want to make them a little bit thinner so by the time you get ready to serve them, they're perfect. So we're going to add the rest of that milk. And that's it. Homemade mashed potatoes in about 25 minutes. And your family's going to love them. Uh, taking a thing from um, my stepdad used to watch the Cajun cook. And he would say, ooh, it's so good. <laughs> and that's the way these mashed potatoes are. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you uh, try to make some mashed potatoes. Uh, let me know how they turn out. And again, this is the first thing that we're going to put for our Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, if there's other stuff that you want to add, if you'll just send it in a message to us, then we'll try to make it. Uh, we'll make it for you and see what, what a mess we make. And, um, you know, then we can, we can work out all the kinks. Again, I love you guys. I thank you so much for watching us. The likes, shares, and comments on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram, and we're also on YouTube. And we're trying to get that up to a thousand. So if you'll help us out with that, I know it's a little bit of trouble uh, because you have to do your email and password. Uh, but I appreciate it so much if you would do that. Um, we're on the way up to two thousand on. Uh, Facebook. So when that happens, we're going to give away another t-shirt. For the ones who have ordered t-shirts, thank you so much. That helps out my granddaughter and her um, college. Uh, we're giving her the profits off of that. And I think that, oh, Patreon. We have Patreon. Uh, if you would go look at that site, if it's something you feel like that you want it to uh, do, check that out. And that helps with the uh, production cost and uh, different things that we have to do uh, that Clint takes his time to do. So we appreciate that. And I think that's it, guys. Um, we're going to, Clint's going to have these. Uh, I'm taking the children on vacation next week. Uh, so I don't know how much we will get to film before then. So just know that we're going to be back.
Uh, and we're going to talk to you real soon. You all enjoy this beautiful weather and try to be kind. Uh, God bless.